Google Earth can be a really valuable resource to have in your classroom for just about any grade level. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to access Google Earth through the Google Chrome web browser, a little bit about how to navigate within Google Earth, and then we're also going to talk about a couple ideas for how to use Google Earth to supplement your instruction or to create some neat, fun, engaging activities for your students. So to get to Google Earth, just go to google.com slash earth. Click the Launch Google Earth button. You may need to give it a minute to load, but once it's done loading, you should get a screen that looks like this. Here you can drag the Earth around. Now you can manually zoom in on any specific place on the planet using just the zoom features, using these plus and minus buttons. You can zoom in with the scroll wheel on your mouse, or you can pinch and zoom on a trackpad. So you can do that just to zoom the whole way in on Pennsylvania manually, or you can search for a specific location using this magnifying glass tool. You can search for the name of a state, the name of a town, specific street addresses, the name of a monument, an ocean, whatever. Just search for it and it will take you there. And it'll also come up with a list of predictive results. So just one example here, let's take a look at a monument. Let's go to Mount Rushmore. So I see the result here. If I click that, it's going to take us there and it will zoom in automatically. You'll still have manual zoom control, so if it doesn't take you in quite far enough, you can go in further. You can click and drag around, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard, or you can hold in the shift key on your keyboard and move the perspective like this to get a better view of what you're trying to see. So you can take them all around, talk about the structure, talk about the surrounding areas. There's some school buses there. This could be a really good way to spark some discussion with your students or to take them on a virtual field trip. Another thing you want to remember is that Street View is also an option within Google Earth. To enable Street View, which is basically like a first-person perspective of an actual photo of the area that you can kind of navigate around with, you want to drag this small peg person in the lower right-hand corner. So click and hold, drag him out, look for any areas that turn blue, because what that is is an area that Google traveled through with their 360 cameras that supports Street View. So we can go right to the heart of this and drop Pegman right there. Google Earth will zoom in and change the street view mode where we can take a look around at the actual photos of the area. Remember this is 360 degrees so you can turn it around. You can walk by double clicking assuming it's an area that's compatible. So if we want to read that area we can double click over there and go to it. You may need to do a little bit of finagling to get to where you're trying to go. No matter what you end up doing you're going to find that students are going to enjoy walking around and seeing the different sites. So I got a little lost here. There it is. You'll get the hang of it the more you use it. I'm using a trackpad right now, so it's not ideal. But you get the idea. All right, now I'm a little lost. Anyway, we can zoom out, use the Pegman to exit Street View again. And we can travel to somewhere else. So that was just one example of like a virtual field trip kind of thing. But another idea for a classroom application could be to travel to a place on the world where students are currently reading about. So maybe it's a certain town or a state or a region or a country that is the setting of their particular story. It's a neat way to take them there to get a little bit more idea of you know where their story takes place. So let's take a look at Japan. I love how it zooms out, changes to that part of the world, and then zooms in. This animation alone can give students some perspective for how large the planet is. So there's Japan. Now we can zoom in and go to a different location within Japan. Okay, so that's just a couple ideas for how to navigate within Google Earth manually and how to search for specific locations. I want to show one last example like this with um, an idea for younger students, or maybe older, to give them more of an idea of their surroundings and where they live on the world. So I would recommend, especially for younger students, to find something that they know. Not necessarily their home, you don't want to really divulge that information, but we could talk about a specific playground at a school, for example. So if we go to Fulton Elementary School, not in Skaggsville, Fulton Elementary School in Ephrata, we could find their playground, get them kind of calibrated so they know what they're looking at. 
So here's Fulton Elementary School. Let's zoom in and find the playground. At this point, they'll probably be talking, saying, oh yeah, we played there, we get on that slide. But now what you can do, shift the orientation so that we're looking down on the school. And at this point now, you can zoom out slowly. And as you're zooming out, you can have some discussion around surrounding areas. Talk about sidewalks, talk about different, different structures or buildings, or how many parking lots there are, how many homes there are, how many people live in this town. We can talk about this wooded area. We can talk about a lot of things. Here's the effort of Cloister. We went on a field trip last year to that location. That's how far it is from our school. And as we zoom out even further, we can see this is the town of Ephrata with no farmland in it, but then farmland all around it. That Ephrata is surrounded by farmland. And go even further out. We can talk about the Appalachian Mountains. We can talk about highways, different states, borders, Lancaster County, out and beyond. There's the ocean, if they're going to the beach over the summer. New York. Go out further, we can talk about different countries, the continents, Greenland, and the rest of the world. So there are a lot of different applications for using the manual find feature here for any grade level. All right, a couple other buttons here. A really cool idea for students to get them thinking creatively and writing or doing whatever else is to use this I'm feeling lucky button. What it does is if you click it, it takes you to a random place in the world. You never know where it's going to go, but once it takes you there, right here, we're a village in Switzerland called Sasvi. We can take a look closer look here, and we can talk about what would, what would it be like to live here. We can find if there's street view at this location. Looks like there is. Let's take a look at this town in Switzerland, this village. And this is a great opportunity to have students engaging in conversation. So when I did this, it looks like it took us inside of a place. I have no idea what we're looking at here. It looks like a bar. Probably not the best, Jägermeister. Yeah, Probably not the best location to talk about. <laughs> but let's find something else. This is Popcorn Shop Club Bar Hotel. We can go out and find a different location. So let's go somewhere else in Sasfi. Here's a school in Switzerland. That might be a little bit more appropriate for students. And here we're having some conversation about what would it be like to live here? What would be different? What would be the same? You can have some great conversation with students to help broaden the horizons and just open their eyes to the rest of the world without ever leaving the classroom. Really cool ideas. Click it again, it takes you to a new place in the world. Maybe their task is to click it and wherever they end up is where they live. They need to write the story to talk about that. Looks like it took us to Switzerland again, which is strange. Here we go to Norway now. If we click it again, now we're going to Hawaii. England, it'll take you all over the place. Really, really cool stuff. All right, the last thing I want to mention here, I'm not going to take too much time on this one here, but is the captain's wheel, which is called the Voyager. This is a relatively new feature of Google Earth that has a lot of different kinds of experiences or virtual field trip kind of learning activities for some specific kinds of topics. So we have the Kennedy Space Center, restaurants, life in the deep ocean. We have these, and these are all kind of compiled content things within Google Earth that's more than just seeing. You can also read and it walks you through things and it's kind of taking you along the trip as you go. So if we go to this crab migration on Christmas Island, we can explore. It's going to take us to Christmas Island, but you can see now that we have some images, we have some reading material, and we have some different pages of content, all teaching us more about the concept of migration of these crabs on Christmas Island. So all wonderful things to check out. Don't forget about Street View. Drag Pegman out, put him on a place that has those blue dots, and you'll be able to kind of take yourself there. And don't forget that you can double click within Street View to kind of walk and allow students to navigate and check out different areas within Street View. So wonderful things. Google.com slash Earth. Check it out. If you've used it before, you might want to jump back in because there's a lot of great things to be done here with students at any grade level. If you have any questions, let us know. Thank you and enjoy.